Hey everybody, welcome to the Meadows Ranch Facebook page. I am Jenny Schaefer and we are here with Dr. Tian Dayton. Did I say your name right, Tian? Yeah. I just learned I've been saying it wrong, so I'm gonna work on that today. But we are both senior fellows with the Meadows and I mean, I'm, I'm always starstruck to be on with you, Tian. Um, she said I could call her Tian, but she is a doctor. She's been a clinical psychologist for like 35 years. You are a pioneer in the field of trauma, addiction. I mean, I have your bio here hanging up above my computer. You've won so many awards, director of the New York Psychodrama Training Institute and on and on and on. And we're both super excited that we get to work with the Meadows. Oh, and my friend Lori just popped up. We actually love finding out who's on. We do want this to be interactive. And Lori just said hello from Florida, I believe if that's where you are today. And anybody else, if you wanna chime in and just say who, oh Priya, my friend from Houston, I hope, you guys were, we've been thinking about you with the hurricane, Laura, all you guys, my neighbors in Texas and Louisiana. I'm in Austin right now and Dr. Dayton's actually in New York. And Carrie, there we are, our team from Boston. So you guys please, oh, and Betsy, wow, a lot of people. Thanks you guys for joining. So just please keep on saying, we really want this to be conversational. Oh, and Rachel, okay, I'll stop saying everyone's name, but we're really happy you guys joined us. And um, okay, I have to say, Dr. Tion Dayton is a super, she's a great sport. So. We have a lot of ideas on what we're gonna do today. And we wanna to talk about a lot about COVID and I'm gonna talk about my recovery from COVID-19. We also wanna give a big shout out to Dr. Dayton's awesome new book called Maintaining Emotional Sobriety During COVID-19. We're doing a, actually a free drawing for that book if you wanna, we're gonna post a link about it. We're gonna post all kinds of helpful links and blogs and things, so check those out. But um, I was just talking to Dr. Dayton before we went live and she is such a good sport that she is willing to do some live psychodrama with me um, about my COVID experience because she is a. I have seen her do this in action many times, and um, I'm I'm actually honored to get to be a participant of this. But first, Tian, would you explain to us what psychodrama is and how that can be helpful for people during this really difficult time of COVID nineteen? So psychodrama is a role playing method. It's uh, developed by J L Moreno, turn of the century Vienna. It allows people to concretize. Essentially, uh, psychological problems are, are lodged in the mind and lodged in the body, right? So oh, right. By, by kind of externalizing that and giving a way to talk to rather than about. Right, right. You gain some, you gain some distance from it. And then right, right. You, you reverse roles, you become it, you talk back to yourself. So right. you develop a relationship with the parts of yourself that you may have cast aside, that you may be shut down, that you might want to wake up, that you might want to reinforce. Right. Anything. You can psychodrama, you can talk to your dog, you can talk to God, yeah. to people aren't living, you can talk to people who you'd like to meet in the future and practice how you might want to be with them. You can go anywhere, you can talk to objects, you can talk to the wall. I love people. that. Well, in my eating disorder recovery, you know, I learned to talk to Ed, which was the eating disorder. And of course, the Meadows Ranch page here is our eating disorder page at the Meadows. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of folks I'm seeing, a, a lot of my friends know that when we say Ed, we're talking about eating disorder. But I did a lot of talking to Ed. Mm -hmm. And then later on, you know, my my second recovery was has been PTSD. I often say I'm I'm fully recovered from my eating disorder. I am not recovered from life. And I am, and for part of my life right now is working on a book about PTSD. And I always write about what I'm learning most and what I'm working on most. And that is PTSD. I've been in recovery for a long time. I am not fully recovered from PTSD, but I have learned a lot. And the hardest thing for me is jumping into a relationship. And I just told Dr. Dayton that I, I found love while I got COVID-19 at the same time. <laughs> so that's part of my COVID-19 story. So just so to briefly catch you up on, we wanted to share a little of my story with having COVID-19 myself. And I, I am harm avoidant, you would say, Tion, as a therapist, um, I like to avoid harm. So let's just say, I was following all of the rules, the COVID-19 rules, and I was in my little quarantine here in Austin and washing my hands and was very anxious about getting the COVID-19 and was kind of letting, was trying to keep my anxiety under check. And I feel like I was doing pretty good. I wasn't, I was not going into my typical OCD type behaviors with things. So I felt like I was balanced and doing what I needed to do, but not going over the top. Okay. At the same time, as we're the pandemic starts, I'm 
I start getting to know this guy better. His name's Robbie. He said I could use his name. <laughs> I was interviewing him for my book about trauma and we had met a couple years ago and we're friends. And during when the pandemic hit, we were talking more about my book. And again, I'm interviewing him about trauma, right? And he had read my book, so he knew all about my trauma, the first draft. And we started Zoom dating, right? Well, three months into the pandemic, he's like, well, I want to come visit you. So at the height of Texas, the worst part in Texas, when Austin was, in fact, like height number one in, in the nation of getting COVID cases, my boyfriend comes to visit me from New York State. So people thought he was nuts because he was leaving upstate New York when it was safe there to Austin. Anyways, he gets here and everything's great at first. And then my PTSD, which I sometimes call like the monster. My book's called Facing the Invisible Monster. But importantly, you know, I do know there's, it's not like all bad. It's like a friendly monster, like a friendly misunderstood monster that's trying to help me, but sometimes doesn't. But essentially my PTSD, the monster kind of, reared up on like the second or third day when Robbie was visiting. And then I got COVID about the fifth day in or so. And what I was just telling Tion before we started was for me, COVID-19 with PTSD, COVID-19 was actually a reprieve from PTSD, meaning it was like part of my, the part of my body that becomes afraid of my boyfriend because of past sexual trauma, the part of my body that becomes afraid of him went away during COVID-19. It was almost like my body said, okay, COVID-19 is a real threat. So we're going to focus on this and we're going to let Robbie off the hook for a while and not, well, we're not going to be scared of him. And Tion was saying, well, maybe we could do a little psychodrama on that. And I also want to share with my story, of course, while my PTSD had some reprieve during COVID-19, of course, my anxiety shot up and Robbie was super helpful with, you know, you're, you're not going to die. You know, we're, we're following all of your, I had this little Thing, this little thing I could put on my finger to measure my oxygen level and oximeter. Here it is. And, um, and he kept me, I had lot, I was losing my appetite, but I kept eating. He was making me grilled cheeses. So I was really dealing with anxiety. I was stay, staying in recovery from my eating disorder, of course, making sure I ate, but I just noticed I was no longer afraid of my boyfriend. So it was like, for me, COVID-19, just in that part, tiny part of my life was this little reprieve and you thought that was interesting and that's when you said would you be willing on camera to talk about that and do some psychodrama and I said sure because for me like it's like a dream to get to do this with you so I'm in and we want you guys to share and post questions too because we we want to make this conversational but I want you guys to see Tion in action so go for it it's all it's all yours <laughs> so you, you said uh, the part of you that so your PTSD went back, receded. It receded. I had started, I have this like bodily startle, like when when Robbie would just walk in the room and I saw him walking in, not be before COVID, like I would see him walking in and my body would just go, <gasps> and, and mind you at that point, like I'm not actually scared in my brain <laughs> cognitively, but my body was scared. But once that startle keeps going, then, it starts tricking my brain into being scared. But for when COVID-19 hit, it was like my brain and body just all went, let's focus on COVID-19. And we, we now know like that's the real threat. My boyfriend, unlike the predator in the past or predators, like my boyfriend is not a real threat. It's can, a you PTSD talk, threat. can you comfortably talk about your that original experience that set you up? Yeah, well, yes. And and I mean, well, since then, I've realized there were many experiences. I thought there was like this one rape. And I, I learned to say that word because for me, that became a word to own. And, and for other people, it might be different words. For me, I thought it was this one sexual trauma with this boyfriend in my 20s. My first experience, my first boyfriend, you know, and... But what I can see now in writing my book is that whole relationship was was sexually manipulative, coercive. I mean, it was just it was a very destructive, abusive relationship all the way around. Emotional. He was a raging alcoholic. So, I mean, you know what that's like to you talk openly about being in a family with alcoholics. So now I can see my trauma was not like this one night. My trauma was like this year and a half really negative. I mean, traumatic sexual relationship and into into it with intimacy. And then, I mean, actually during, later on I found out, and I've been, this has recently come out. I had a 
I ended up with a therapist, a male therapist who actually was trying to help me recover from PTSD. But I, in, I found out recently and have filed a complaint with the board and I'm in a hearing about it, but he was actually re-traumatizing me by doing inappropriate things in what was supposed to be trauma therapy. Like for instance, watching pornography in therapy, um, just as one example. So I actually realized recently I was re-traumatized by a therapist. And that, that was hard. That, then that became another trauma to work on. <laughs> it was like, yeah. a real, uh, and you know, so, so that, that's very significant because when you get traumatized and you make an attempt to get better and then your safe space doubles back on you like that. Exactly. So I imagine you were keeping that. Were you talking to other people about what was going on in your therapy or was that kind of well, a secret? Well, I, this is all going to be in my book, but I didn't even know that what he was doing was wrong because he was a very expert therapist. And he said, this is a part of this certain therapy and that's what they do. And I it wasn't until I interviewed someone from my book several years ago, an expert in the actual therapy, an actual expert in the therapy. And she said, Jenny, that's not therapy. She said, you never got prolonged exposure therapy. She said, you were getting traumatized um, by this man. He was grooming you for sex is what she actually said. And, um, and, and looking back and the, the good news is I actually have it all on audio recording and I, it was hard, but also healing for me to go back and hear the audio and hear myself, you know, seven years ago and the voice of myself mm -hmm. being taken advantage of not, it, and I had forgotten all that happened our trauma protects our brain. So I'd forgotten a lot of it. Yeah. If you were to um, put that part of yourself in a yeah. chair, that part of yourself. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh yeah. I'm going to move over for that, that part. Yeah, that perfect. When I'm over here, this is that part of myself. Yeah. yeah. This is you now. Oh, this is me. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're, what I, what, um, where is that part of yourself now where you are? The part that's scared or the part? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm too. You right will talk from here. the part of yourself right now that you're talking to me to that part of yourself. So okay. you're not talking yet as that part of yourself. You're going to be oh, talking talk to it. Okay. If I'm talking to it, I want to be like straight exactly. on. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Got okay. it. Okay. So, Jenny, what, um, or do you want to go back farther to the part of yourself that was in the relationship or? Or is one part the same? Is, Whatever they, you're, you're the boss. And I mean, and honestly, between all that, there's a series of psychodrama. You're the boss. Oh, I'm the boss. Well, there's a series yeah. of of relationships in between that were. I ended up. Let's just say I've ended up in rooms with a lot of predators, and um, okay, just to realize that I have been trauma repetition has been a big part of my life. So I've been kind of repeating it a lot. But those are the. The therapist is the biggest okay. example and the most part of the part yeah. of yourself that is uh, prone to that is scared and draws us, you know, draws us in. Right. 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 Self that is. I don't want to imply draws us in, but you know what I'm saying? Repeats this. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. OK. Uh, OK. So what would you say and now from this point on, Jenny? It's just, you just relax and I will ask oh, you. That's so great. And I will take over and you just move through the motions. And okay. if we're not talking to each other anymore, I'll just be directing this action. Of okay. Your, right? Got it. Okay. So what do you want to say from today? Is there an echo? I don't hear an echo. Okay. Um, what do you want to say to that? Do you, do you call her? What would you call her? Does she have... I sometimes call her frozen Jenny because it's like she's frozen okay. in like tr the trauma. Like I kind of froze, I freeze it in okay. like that. Yeah. Yes. What would you like to say to frozen Jenny? Oh, I would like to say. Talk to you. I know. So yeah, I mean, I would say, I know you're really scared sometimes. And sometimes you're so scared that it scares me like yesterday when you are the day before when you decided it was a good idea to break up with your boyfriend because he was so dangerous, even though we know he's not dangerous, but 
but I know you get confused in who you're talking to. But that scares me because sometimes you break up with people that I don't want to break up with. Reverse roles and now become frozen Jenny talking back to yourself. Move over. <laughs> oh yeah. So so I would say, well, well, Jenny, the thing is like you've done this to me a lot. Like we've ended up in these situations with actual dangerous people. So I can, I'm starting to see this Robbie guy is like safe, but we thought that about the therapist that was helping you and we were wrong. So I'm just here to protect you and get you out like before you can get hurt again. Reverse roles. No. So, back, back. so I would say back, I can see that you're, I can see that that you're, and you're really good at that. <laughs> like you're really good at, at getting us out of things. Um, May I double for you now? Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, and explain what that is. Double would be speaking your inner life. It's like Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to now double for Jenny talking to Frozen Jenny. So she's playing me, you guys. And if she was doing this in person, she might have like, you might have like your hand on my shoulder right now. Behind you. Yeah. Um, so, so Frozen Jenny, you're really good at getting us out of relationships. Um, yeah. But you're not so good at letting me have them. You're not good at letting me stay in. Ooh, that's good. Um, that that fits. That's really good. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, you're, you can so, you can say that now. So frozen, Jenny. Or, yeah, you're like really good at getting us out of relationships, but you're not very good at letting us stay in them and give them a try. Reverse roles. Okay. So now I'm frozen, frozen. Jenny again. Okay. Move over. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> so this is true, but I'm just trying to keep you from pain because in the end, like uh, relationships just like strangle you and trap you and take you down. That's at least may, that's been our experience. For you, I, I mean, I double for frozen, Jenny. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I can't really hear you, Jenny. I can't really hear you. I mean, I just. When you say that, I just have to go back to my default here. I just, I, I, I just can't really hear you. I can't really trust you. I can't really. Actually, hear you. that's really true. Because there seems to be, she cannot. There, that's now I'm talking. That that seems to be very true. Like there's like a lack to her. Talk to right to oh, her. yeah. From yeah. either role. From either role. Well. Oh, so like, well, I would say to Frozen Jenny, yeah, we we seem to have like a disconnect in communication sometimes. Like you don't, sometimes I don't even think, I don't even know how to reach you um, at all. It's like we're completely disconnected. So I, we need a better path of communication because you were not scared when I had COVID. Like you went from being scared of Robbie to you like went away and you let me have a relationship for like two weeks in peace as I had COVID-19, which was not peaceful at all. So but, devil for you? Yeah. For you? So Frozen Jenny, it I need to have a life-threatening disease in order for you to take a break and stop and go get hypervigilant. I you get hypervigilant on about something else, then the heat is off of the relationship. Oh my gosh. But you yeah. all seem to, that it's got to be something so big, like yeah. a COVID, in order to yeah. and I've, I've got to like give you space to get hypervigilant about but the hypervigilance isn't going away. You're just putting it somewhere else. Wow, you are so Sorry, I'm getting out of the role, but that's such a key. That's so true. That feels right. That feels right. Because then after COVID, I mean, as talk all of us. Frozen Jenny, talk to you. Frozen. Oh, so, so who am I talking to now? Frozen Jenny. I okay. may I double for you again? Yeah, yeah. Please. I'm. 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 I so want it. I want this connection so badly, but when I get close to it, I. 
I I just pull back a little. Correct that if it's wrong. Don't wear it if it doesn't feel right. And this is what I'm saying to Frozen Jenny. Yeah. Um, I want, yeah, I mean, I want. When I start to feel, I want to go back in my head. Yeah, yeah. When I start to, that is, that feels right. That if, feels right. Yeah, when you start to feel, it become, it can feel overwhelming and I start to go back. So tell, tell Frozen Jenny about how you feel overwhelmed when you start to connect with her. What you're afraid may happen. Oh, when I connect with her. Yeah. Well, oh, well, when I connect with you. When I connect, well, when I connect with you, Frozen Jenny. Actually, when we're when we're connected, when we're at least talking, I feel like I have a a fighting chance of like having a relationship. But what gets scary is when when it gets too overwhelming for you. You just like you go away, but not in the sense of like COVID-19 go away. You like go to this like closet where I can't reach you and you're so scared that all of a sudden like you become me and there's no separation. Does that make sense? It's like- You overwhelm me. There, we became, yeah, she, she over, you overwhelm me. Shaking, hypervigilant. It's, I feel, I feel your terror. Yeah, I feel, I, and I guess that's a better way of looking. I actually become her. like. And it is the shaking and I have the terror. And sometimes I feel like I'm crying for no reason, you know, tears without a narrative. It's like, there's nothing wrong here now. And so during COVID again, like I was those, any of those PTSD symptoms had dissipated, but it was well, for you as Jenny again. Yes. Yes. Now I'm going to take a leap forward. Please. You, you don't have to wear it if it doesn't feel right. But just frozen Jenny, I'm sorry I put you in the situations. I feel responsible for putting you in situations that you couldn't handle. And I'm not sure when I get close to those situations again, I'm scared I'm going to do it to us all over again. And then I sort of freak out and you freak out and I freak out. And you, the more you freaked out, the more I freak out. Yes. <laughs> but I'm sorry that I put you in those. Do, is there, I, I have yeah. a sense of, I've gone so far to get us both out of them. Yes, uh, that's actually, yeah, I mean, I, that fits. So Frozen Jenny, I can see how we, I have put us unknowingly in situations like this. And then, yeah, you get scared, I get scared. And then all of a sudden we're like this one scared, just blob of fear and chaos at, at times um and then it explodes relationships you're saying, right if this part of you could talk if this part of you had a voice what would it say to this out? part the heart part right here with it right here. oh this part would say i please want you can you please can we find a way for you to trust me because i really want to try to give relationships a shot and i'm 44 and I've, I, I feel finally like ready. Say so, that to Frozen Jenny, yeah. say that again to Frozen. So Frozen Jenny, I'm, I feel, I, I know you need to trust me more and, but I'm asking if you could trust me some because I think for us, we've seen glimpses with Robbie of safety, um, and love and like what a relationship can really be about. If this part of you had a voice, what would it say? Oh, well, this part would say, this part gets stuck. So this part would say, oh my gosh, but ah, we're gonna get trapped again. It's like strength, kind of like feeling of ah, getting, if it feels like when I'm in that, when frozen Jenny gets triggered, it's when, the, you, when you get triggered. When, when you, I get triggered, like, it's, I feel like all the air is getting sucked out of the room. And so it's like, when you say my throat, my instinct is like to protect it one, like the back of it, but also just, it feels like that's the part that really gets triggered. There's no air in the room. I can't breathe. Yeah. I just have to break up with him. So what, it'll be better. what is that part of you want to say to the frozen Jenny part of you? Oh, this part wants to say. If it's a voice, what would it say? Or what would it say to anybody? What does that part of you well, want I think to say? it would say, to frozen Jenny is it's like I hear you I get frozen too and I think I'm part of you like we are you kind of live in here in a way yeah and but like we've had experiences reverse roles reverse roles okay now so who am I now 
frozen Jenny talking about you. Okay, it's a non-frozen Jenny. Yes, and you're, and and I'm going to say what Jenny said. You, that part, I'm part of you. We live, we live in here. And yes, we do. Or higher up, or in the amygdala too. Um, and the part of the brain, the fear center. But yeah, I agree with you. We do live trapped. Here we can feel it. We don't live in our body. And interesting. That's uh, and that's how I used to help you with your eating disorder. It's keeping help, you know, keeping you out of your body, keeping you here and here. Tell her more about that. Well, I was a big help to you. That's what I, that's what the, this eating disorder, I was helping you. I was helping you. Well, back then, yeah, I mean, before the trauma actually started, but I still was that part of you that I was always, I was that part of you at four years old that cried, that was just sensitive and cried about, and about everything and we're just that I'm I'm that very sensitive part of you that's always been there and I've came out as OCD when you were six and I came out as perfectionism in school and then an eating disorder and then PTSD and I'm kind of tired I want to stop having to come out say that again oh you're gonna make me cry I'm, I'm kind of tired I want to stop having to come out that's good if you can yeah. if you let that it feels like it's actually like coming out like that's yeah. how the, I feel like the tears like yeah. but yeah that feels because yeah that feels that feels right oh, okay I'm glad I had a handkerchief just in case <laughs> do you want to wrap it up here and share or do you want to go somewhere? yeah well I mean we well what do you guys want to do because we, I know we like changed this up on you. Um, <laughs> we changed our topic up on you. We're probably but, a good time to wrap up and share. I just checked the time. Yeah, yeah. So let's wrap up and share and maybe take questions too. So maybe reverse roles going back to your Jenny self. Okay, myself. Yeah. And person Jenny just said, I kind of want to, I kind of, I would kind of want to go let this go. I kind of want to stop holding on so tight, something like that. Yeah. I mean, what would you say back to her? How do you want to wind up that this conversation? I mean, I want to say that was really eye-opening. This is amazing. I got therapy tonight. Wow. Um, I want to say, I mean, that feels so right and refreshing, actually, like that she's ready to talk right retire. to her. Uh, so I would say to Frozen Jenny, like, I'm so relieved to hear you say that because I was thinking like we're just gonna have to keep writing books about all the problems we have. <laughs> and maybe we could write one about like being happy, like the song we have, it's okay to be happy. It's okay to be sad, it's okay to be happy. I have a little bracelet I wear, but Robbie and I wear them to remind ourselves. <laughs> By the way, I, I broke up with him, you guys, but I just got back to him, with him, <laughs> so we're back. <laughs> Rose and Jenny broke up with him, and I was able to was save it, but I don't wanna have that to happen anymore. Say that to Rose and Jenny, say that to Yeah, Rose and Jenny. Yesterday was a very close call. And um, when I woke up this morning, I was in tears and I had therapy today um, before you. And I was in tears thinking I made the hugest, that you made the biggest mistake because we've pushed out like the best guy we've ever had in our life. The safest man, one who really loves us, even you, <laughs> he loves you too. And um, it was really, I was just, I was devastated thinking that I just, blew up the my greatest love ever and then i knew i had to do this talk tonight i'm like i'm bawling all day what am i gonna do <laughs> but so frozen jenny i mean i want to say that was really scary look we promised robbie we would really work hard on not doing that again and tell frozen jenny um how you're gonna do that how well, gonna well i want to well, I, I work today. I, I'm learning DBT skills. You got distress tolerance let skills. Me, for one. Let, me, let, me, let me try something else, if I may. Um, how about because you've connected so well with her? Yeah. How uh, Tell her in the scene by telling her how you want to maintain that connection. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, so Frozen Jenny, I mean, that's where I really want to maintain our ability to talk because things go bad when when we become one or when you go in the closet or maybe this is like the closet, but um, so I guess every day I really want to check in with, I really want to check up, be more mindful. And in your book, Tian, you know, your new book, 
maintaining emotional sobriety during COVID, you talk about mindfulness so much. And I actually printed off, um, actually, for me. Um, in the scene with Frozen Jenny, and then we'll talk about the book. Well, yeah, well, Frozen Jenny, I mean, things you want. I printed this off, Creating Safety, and there's tips okay. for, um, I think Dr. Dayton's book has a lot of tips for how I can help you feel safer. And so I actually printed off all these tips for us so we could work on, like, you know, not isolating and staying more positive and going in nature more and sleeping more. Cause I know that I sometimes overwork and don't give you time to like rest. So I know that like, I sometimes don't give you the safest place, whether or not there's a guy here. And so I just think Dr. Dayton's tips that I printed out are going to help us <laughs> keep you safe and me and us talking. Cause if I don't do stuff like this mindfulness and these safety tips, then we we would lose our connection, and I just put that together today tonight. Thank you, Tian. I honestly didn't even put that together till now. Yeah. I learned so much in the past thirty minutes. I can't believe. Wow, thank you. That was amazing. And this was like off the cuff, obviously, you guys. Um, but so take let's um let's see. I want to encourage others. Yeah, do, do we have like questions, you guys? Um, I know we totally like. Um change some topics on you but we saw like there were some questions let's see Lori oh, wait, um, let's see well I love Lori saying hope for recovery but do you guys have um any questions for us about like psychodrama or anything we weren't actually talking about about COVID but um someone was asking is this similar you can answer this Tian like to IFS model um internal family systems which we also use at Meadows Ranch Dr. Richard Swartz is a senior fellow as well there's a lot of overlap in and the talk anytime you break out a role that is actually coming from psychodrama so I oh, okay uses role play and that is psychodrama so what what uh he's done is break out a certain use of role play. Yeah, yeah. And in psychodrama, you, you can talk to anything, internal parts, external parts. If you and I had gone on with this journey, yeah. I would have probably gone back farther and talked, you know, talk, asked you to talk to yourself at four and that might, oh, yeah. then who, you know, who could play your four-year-old, who could play your mother, who, who's in the scene with you? If yeah. You said, who, then who could play these people? And we, yeah. And I've seen you do that. Yeah, we keep moving through your life as you brought it up. Psychodrama right. is very non-prescriptive. So yeah. there's overlap. The role play is the overlap. And well, the Rachel was pointing out, you're so gracious when you lead this. Um, and she was pointing out how it'd be so beautiful if we could be more that, that way to ourselves. And Jeffrey actually had a question about COVID, which I think seems like psychodrama could really help. Like for mm -hmm. one, well, a lot of people struggle with the uncertainty, but he was his question, how can we maintain emotional sobriety given the unknown? And you and I talked about uncertainty of the future. How can we stay positive? But could you like do psychodrama with the, could, could like Jeffrey or I, could we like write a letter to our un the uncertainty? Absolutely. Jeffrey, what a good, there are a few exercises. And you and know, in the, these are actually in the book, you guys. Her yeah. book is jam packed. It's all, it's tons of exercises like this, but would you explain? I like the, like sure. the letter and writing one. Exercises sort of warm you up to this sort of thing. And, and um, you can ask you questions and break it out in a way that will, will be, as I wanted it to feel as if I was working with you, uh, someone doing a workbook. But Jeffrey, it's just without the workbook, if you, you could talk to an empty chair that represented your uncertainty, you could, uh, you could talk, write a letter to your uncertainty and, and reverse roles and write a letter from your uncertainty back to yourself. You could dialogue with your uncertainty, Jeffrey, uncertainty, Jeffrey, uncertainty, Jeffrey, uncertainty. You, and, and the idea is to move the uncertainty from here, you know, from the body, from the, the buzz in the head into a role to concretize yeah. it and externalize it so that you get a little more distance from it. And then also to become that. A lot of people will use psychodrama, but they don't use the doubling and the role reversal, Jenny. We haven't right. talked about oh, okay. that. The doubling, it gives the opportunity for the director to enter the unconscious life of the protagonist, we call it, without intruding, without being in your face. I mean, right, right. you don't want, if you've been traumatized, is somebody going, well, can you tell us a little more about the, you know, it's, it's your, because trauma makes you sort of shut down inside. Yeah, yeah. For questions sure. that make you 
have to become cognitive before you've been able to feel the feelings that are coming up make you force you sometimes to tell a story that isn't as connected to feeling as psychodrama allows it to be. Yeah. That, you- yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. And people were asking questions and um, if it was similar to what I used to do with the eating disorder. And, and in many ways we did, I did psychodrama in my eating disorder recovery. Like I, I would talk to Ed and then I would get in the Ed chair and I like Ed would talk to me and we did a lot of that. And so if you guys have read my book, life without Ed, you, you definitely that was we it's a, my first book is really a lot of psychodrama i now know in a way but Tion, jill was asking she's a good friend and, and a great question um well she made a comment i was aware she said um when another part keeps coming up um do you need to give it a space to be seen and she points out a good part like i have this analytical part that kept trying to come and take over like the frozen part but she said like if another part comes up like do you give it a, a place to be seen. And that's kind of what you were saying. You would but, have done if we had more time. What I would suggest, and you've already figured it out, is is uh, put the analytical part of you in a chair. Because, yeah, well, I need to do that later when we sign uh, off. <laughs> yeah, well, you can look at that as a defense, the defense of intellectualization. And yeah. The Ooh, yeah. Therapist. I mean, being a therapist is kind of a defense of intellectualization. <laughs> oh, I love you because you share, you share your own problems and your own stories, which I love. That's not... Okay. Not I a lot of people do. Because I wanted therapy. Five days of- <laughs> I wanted to live around therapy because I thought this feels so sane and great. How can I never leave? And I thought, well, I'll become a therapist. And then, you know, into the process, luckily I thought I better get some help for myself. I had gotten help for myself, but I needed more. Yeah. Well, and thanks for being honest about that. And man, you guys, we could go on forever. We have another question, I think. Yeah. You might want to answer about psychodrama. What, would you say psychodrama is the trauma treatment with the least amount of likelihood of re-traumatization? You have good questions in your I know, Marsha. That was Marsha. Well, Marsha, this is this is the million dollar question. And, you know, obviously I give this endless thought of how to do psychodrama in a way that's not re-traumatizing because it, it can be re-traumatizing. And um, I move slowly. I, here's what I look for. I look for engagement. I look for, uh, when, when a trauma person is in what I would call the trauma vortex or that moment of reliving, you can sometimes not be showing a lot on your face. Exactly, yeah. On the inside, you are just going, you're time traveling. Now at a moment like that, I stand in awe, I give space and I just keep trying to keep the process moving because the whole point of psychodrama is to help people access their own internal healer. And if I get in there and boss you around and tell you what to do and tell you what roles, then I'm, I'm putting my will before yours really. And I don't know, you are your yeah. own healer. My job is to keep the room safe. So if you could do that kind of psychodrama and somebody is letting you lead the way and not manipulating or telling you what to say or what to do or what to think or what to feel, then it is, it is very much not too re-traumatizing. You're yeah. Pretty, well, they're telling you what to do. Um, I've had that kind of psychodrama done to me before. And when I figured out what was happening, I just got very quiet. Yeah. Because I knew this therapist was not going to change. And well, so- yeah. And you made me feel safe right away by saying that I was, I said you were in charge and you said, no, I was. Exactly. We have another great question. Gabrielle says, I'm curious about the mind body connection that you went to. I noticed you went to the heart and throat. Is there a reason for that? And she said, would, would you go to the stomach area as well? Of course, of course you'd go. Yeah. To- but may may I be may I speak about you, Jenny? With that? Oh yes, please, okay. please. So I noticed Jenny. I don't know if you know, but I'm always listening for body uh, evidence. And at one point in the drama, uh, Jenny, you went. So your voice changed. It just tightened up in here a little, and then oh. and then suddenly that opened up. And when I asked you to if that part of you had a voice, suddenly your voice dropped and became it, calmer and opened up. Oh, and after that talked, it, then it was here. And so when I ask you that, is it in here? And of course, I always need to be willing to be made wrong. If you had said, no, <laughs> I'm in there, then I wouldn't. No, it, it's in there. It's in there. 
Well, I can usually hear it after all these years. And to be honest with you, I can usually feel it in my own body after all these years. Wow. In your yeah. case, I just saw it because, um, because you're very open, you're very willing. So there it is. It evidences itself. It will reveal, your story will reveal itself in your body if the therapist listens. Yeah, well, and you are the gifted and I mean, you are, you are, I don't even know the word for it. You are just a, a therapy. What would be the word? You're just gifted and talented. You're a, you're very special to I mean, you have the intuitive, you have a special gift. I, I felt it tonight. I can't, I have to thank you guys for being willing to participate in my in my psychodrama with Tian. I know we we shifted up the topic a bit for you, but I hope that was helpful. And and I want to say, like in terms of COVID, I mean, she really wrote her workbook. I got to promote it, Tian. I'm sorry, but like yeah, maintaining man. emotional sobriety during COVID nineteen, and we do we are doing a book giveaway on my blog. We're gonna we posted that, and we'll post a link to her book. And she has all kinds of cool tools on her her site that are really fun, like getting to know your emotions better and things. But I highly suggest you guys getting her book if, if you're really struggling right now during COVID or if you're not struggling and you're struggling that you're not struggling because like you're finding it to be a break. She talks about that too. Like if you're a parent, but the, it's really a workbook for tangible tools. And like I said, I mean, I printed off these pages that I plan to do pages nine through, you know, 15 or so every day. <laughs> but so thank you. Thank you so much, Tian. Do you, do you have any closing words for folks? Oh, and well, actually, let's see. Jeff says, is there a way to listen to this again and share it with a good friend? Yes, Jeffrey, it's always going to be up here forever for <laughs> on the Meadows Ranch page. It'll the link, the video will be up and we might repost it too, but it it always is house. Anything we do is is housed up there on the Meadows Ranch page. And and thank you guys so much. We do a lot of psychodrama at Rio Retreat Center. We do it at the Meadows. I don't know, is your retreat going on right now, Tion? I wasn't sure because of COVID. Is it? Are you yeah, doing Thrive? Rio is doing, is open. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, Rio is definitely open. I didn't know if you were going down there to do anything at the moment. But the Rio and, and uh, the staff there is doing it. And also they're doing Heart Wounds uh, is one yeah. of my programs. And that one is really, you know, I love that program because one of the things that is is on everybody's road to recovery, I think, most often. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I was. I want to go to more Rio retreats. I I did Survivors one, and it was amazing. I actually I'm looked into myself to doing um some of our. I want to do more of our retreats there. I was supposed to do a Life Without Ed retreat, and then I got COVID, so yeah. um, we canceled before I got sick. But um, good thing we canceled because I would have had COVID at the. Well, I wouldn't have made it there. I was sick, but but we're very. We have. We're actually going to post a link. We're still doing all of our work at the Meadows. A great work, and we have enhanced COVID measures and protective measures to keep our patients safe and we're going to post a link about that too and we are out there helping people this is actually a great time to get treatment i mean so many things are not happening in the world and it's a nice time to take a break and take care of yourself and i'm i'm honored to be a part of that with a with our patients at the meadows and right now we're doing a lot of, on zoom but and but we're keeping our patients safe and we're still we're still out there saving lives and we i know you and i both we joined the meadows and we were super honored um, to be a part of a program that's always talked about trauma and this is a big trauma for all of us covid 19 or it can be post traumatic growth right and you talk about that in your book and i want to leave close on that hopeful note of mm -hmm. post traumatic growth actually this morning i had told tion yesterday in our little rehearsal a tech rehearsal that I wanted to donate my plasma, my COVID antibodies, because I felt like that was something that could really help people. So I tried to do it a couple days ago, but I was in like a fight or flight state with Robbie and in part my anxiety that mm -hmm. my pulse was too high and they sent me home from the donation center and I was so sad. They gave me like an hour to get my pulse down. I was like meditating, <laughs> but I'm like, I was like, in, Frozen Jenny was there trying to donate plasma. We'll just say that. So anyway, Frozen Jenny got sent home. So today I'm like, I can do this. Like I'm going to get my pulse down. And I woke up this morning and realized I broke up with the greatest man ever. And Jill, I won't break up with him. I saw, I saw what you said. I appreciate what you said, Jill, about not breaking up with him again. We're going to talk to Frozen Jenny more about that. But um, today I went and donated plasma and my pulse was down. Right. I was able to get it down and be calm because I'm not in fight or flight. And I donated plasma. And it was so amazing, guys. If you guys have had COVID and you have antibodies, please donate because you can really save lives and it just felt so help so empowering to me to turn a, a negative into a positive but it was amazing to see my my blood actually they take your blood out of you and they they take the plasma 
like put it in a little bag and then they give you your blood back. And I was actually envisioning um, my PTSD being taken out and left in the bag and my blood being put back in. I was doing a little imagery, isn't that wild? <laughs> and it was, it seemed to be like helpful. But anyway, so, but you guys, thanks so much. Um, please, or oh, see Tiffany, you were signed up for our retreat, um, Life Without Ed. Sorry, we're gonna do it again. I'm glad we didn't do it because it was a dangerous time at that point. And again, I, I ended up with COVID, but thank you, Tion. You are a gem. Thanks for staying on late with us. I know it's late where you are. And thank you guys. You guys are awesome. If you have ideas for future events, please, please share. We really want to do these for you. And we just want to be open and real and authentic. And, mm -hmm. and we want you guys to share and ask your great questions. So thank you. And Tion, do you have any closing words about any words of hope for people out there? Anything you know, about it sounds like a really sort of silly thing to say, but I have my, <laughs> I spilled coffee on my, I mean, like a pot of coffee on my beige bedroom rug. <laughs> like and, today? like yeah, No, a couple of days ago, and our family was gathering, the, you know, as we'd been together the first time in COVID because oh, yeah. distancing and parts of us. So anyway, I didn't attend to it because it was just the grandkids were there and I, I didn't want to take time away. So today I, I have been using every stain remover, every... <laughs> Is that we're kind of, trauma is like a trauma is like a stain. You know? Yes. Oh my goodness. And the way it comes up is by layer by layer by layer. Wow. And it's sort of amazing how that wow. coffee stain came up. At first, I could see the rug again. There was a beige rug again, and it was like how you see yourself when the trauma starts clearing. You go, Oh my God, I have oh. myself. I didn't remember were there. I have colors I didn't remember. Oh, I that's beautiful. Back gets smaller and then you keep and it just keeps lightening. That's Even, really powerful. Yeah, it just you just have to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and trust and, and enjoy the process because wow. every part of the journey is beautiful, is empowering, and is finding more of you, which is the journey of life. So I love that. Well, I found more of me today, thanks to you, Tian, and all of you guys for your supportive comments. Thank you. This was really special to me. And and um, we want to have you on again, of course, Tian. In fact, I want to do this every night with you. But, <laughs> but thank you for sharing that. And you guys hold on to hope and please do check out her book. I mean, it's tangible, practical tools on how to deal with this tough time. And we're going to keep doing, we have tons of resources on our blogs, our sites. We're doing all kinds of webinars. So check out all of our resources. But we're constantly doing things to try to just provide support during this time. So thank you for tuning in. And Dr. Tian Dayton, you are a master. Thank, thank you for sharing your gifts with us tonight thank and you. your vulnerability. Good night, you guys. Take care. I'm going to go hang out with Robbie now since I didn't <laughs> break up with him. <laughs> well, Frozen Jenny, we got him back today. <laughs>